Hi, this is Danny Hogger, and today we're talking about how to use GarageBand in junior high or for your personal use. And I'm going to be narrating a five-part series for you, my students, and my digital students, about how to use GarageBand to create original music. And I'm here with one of the most eighth grade students that exist. Violet is here with me. Violet, good morning. Hi. She's very excited and so are you. So look through this document. This is my guide and along the way I'm going to describe step in text but also with this screen capture so you know exactly what I'm talking about. Using GarageBand we're going to write an original composition and mix your own audio file over five weeks. This is lesson one, getting started. Next week we'll talk about drumming and how to use the digital drummers to create template that keep the beat for your original song. Today we talk about the digital audio works station, musical typing, and how to add and remove tracks to set up your workspace. The first thing you need to do today, feel free to pause this video as needed and then continue, is open up GarageBand. It's going to get a little bit overwhelming at first, so stay with us. We're going to start a new project. I'm not going to save this project that I was working on. And the first thing you're going to see is a choice. Violet, you'll see you've got lots of different selections on the screen. You could start a keyboard collection, an amp collection, a songwriter or an electronic and some other options as well. Which version do you think would be best for someone who's just starting out? Uh, maybe a keyboard collection because it might be a little overwhelming for like if you have everything at first. All right, and since we are doing drumming in week two, let's look at keyboards today and just kind of look at how the program works and how the workstation is set up. So what I want you to do is click keyboard collection and click choose. That's gonna open a brand new session for you. And today we're gonna to go over how to use the musical keyboard, how to set up your workstation and save your project. That's a really great idea. And that'll be, I think, the simplest way to start. So it's gonna take a few moments and you'll notice now that you've launched into the screen. You've got a lot to look at here, right? There's a lot mm -hmm. in going on. The first thing I suggest is maximizing your workstation by clicking on the top left, the plus button or the green button on your screen and give yourself a full screen to work with. Now you've got more area to work. Um, what else do you see? What are the first impressions as you look at the screen? I see a bunch of little circles which I think are like little volume buttons and like also other things you can like amplify, amplify what you work on. Right, so Violet was first drawn to the control scheme which is similar to like an amp head where you control the individual settings, the effects, the dynamics, and the tone of different instruments. And what do you see up here kind of in the middle of the screen? Um, a bunch of different like set settings of keyboards and pianos. Perfect. And we're going to use lots of those. And you can choose as we go along which you want to use and which you don't. To delete a track, let's say you didn't want the classic electric piano, all you need to do is click on it with your mouse and hit the delete key on your keyboard. That track is now gone. If you wanted to add a track, you could hit the plus button here and bring in lots of tracks. And what question you might have is, well, how do I know if I want to use it or not? Well, let's sample them. So the way you're going to use GarageBand here on your Macs is to use your keyboard as a digital piano or keyboard. Um, you can go up to Window at the top of your screen and select Show Musical Typing. The shortcut on your computer is Command and K. When you select Command K, you'll be given your keyboard on the screen. Have you interacted with this before, Violet? Um, I've interacted with an actual piano. Perfect. The same. They do look similar. You'll notice that it takes the line that starts with the letter A on your keys. That was a real life guitar. Uh, and it goes from A all the way to the apostrophe and quotation mark keys. Each of them represents either a white key or a black key for the whole steps and the half steps. So the way that you can interact is choose, take a few seconds right now, pause the video once I'm done with the instruction, choose one of the ones that you would like to try out and then simply click on it. You'll notice it changes in the library preview and either type or click and just sample the sounds, try a few keys, maybe try to play a little melody to like Mary had a little lamb or something and we'll rejoin you in just a minute. Uh, so now that you know how to use some basic musical keys, we could show you how to record some of those keys. Let's say I wanted to record the Steinway Grand Piano. I'm gonna select it, then I'm gonna hit the record button. It's gonna do a four count and it's currently set to 120 beats per minute. I'm gonna leave that standard right now because we're just experimenting and learning how to use these tools. And then I'm gonna hit a few keys and then I'm gonna hit the stop button. So it's now recording, note, 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 beautiful music, note, 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 space bar will stop it or you could click stop at the top of the screen. And if you wanted to play it back, you simply move your cursor to the beginning of the timeline, hit the space bar, and you can hear back that playback. 
so pretty awesome. Let's say I didn't like it. I click on the top of Steinway Grand Piano, hit the delete key and it's gone. If you ever make a mistake and want it back, use Command Z, the undo button, and it's back again. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. You could also click and drag and make a loop if you wanted to repeat that same thing over and over again. You're definitely gonna use that looping feature. Once you've experimented with the key, you guess, Violet, what these plus and minuses down here are for in the kind of beige -ish color. If you wanna raise the volume. Good question, a uh, good guess. Your volume keys are on your keyboard in the top left near the delete, top right, I should say. But the octave button is great because maybe you like the piano, but what you want is something really high pitched or really low pitched. Your X is gonna raise your pitch and you'll know where you are on the keyboard because of this blue bar right here. Highest octave, middle range, lowest octave. So using Z and X, you can raise or lower the section of the keyboard that you're working on. It's pretty cool. And now you've got really high notes. Pretty cool. And that's gonna be really useful for getting the specific sounds. The velocity changes how fast or slow that notes will sound. Okay, so you can play around with that as you like, as well as sometimes you really want chords or notes to last for a long time and not just go away really quick like this. Um, so you can hit the tab key and hold it. You'll see the green lighting up on the screen and that will sustain your chord longer. And you'll hear that it's just staying around and it lasts. So those are some quick notes on how to use musical typing. What else do you think is um, anything else stand out to you or do you have questions at this point? Um, what are the blue and purple keys above the piano? Awesome, the blue and purple keys. What you can do with the blues is bend the notes. So when you get to some synthesizers like this 80 sync lead, we've got long notes that are lasting a long time. We can bend them up or bend them down with the ones and the twos. And that's just cool to kind of play around with, especially when you're doing solos and things. Mm -hmm. Anything else stand out to you or you're wondering about? No, not really. Okay, Seems so simple. this is a good chance to practice. I'm gonna pause the video here, you can pause it as well. Take a minute or two, just play around with some notes. Maybe try recording a few tracks on some of the different keys that are on the screen. Blend them together and see how they sound. Try recording a few things, then delete them all when you're done and we'll continue the video. So now after you've experimented with some different tones and keyboards, you'll notice in the library section of the screen, there's many more options like guitar and orchestral sounds and mallets and all kinds. If you wanted to drag something in, just click and drag. And now you should have a marimba there. And all the same musical typing applies, the same keys, the same notes, which is really nice when you go to arrange your song because it's easy to know if you've played those notes before. You'll write some notes to yourself on which chords you're using. And so try taking now a few minutes, in fact, and enjoy like browsing around and just trying out. This is totally exploring right now. Try out some instruments that you think you might wanna use in your song. Once you're done with that, I'm gonna post uh, some, some notes that are popular melodies so you can try playing some songs on the keyboard today. Like Mary Had a Little Lamb, I will type and show you the letters and overlay them on the screen. Try playing a few songs in different instruments and see how they sound. Next week when we get together, we're gonna start building your drummer and let you know how to build your rhythm and template for the song. Violet, anything else for today? Uh, nope, that's it. You did a pretty rocking job, nice work. Yeah. All right, well this is Mr. Hoggers. We see you on the next edition. Tune in for week two where we build your beat and begin placing the backbone and fundamentals of your song. Thanks for watching.